Hey guys, you only see the founder of Edge Alert. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through a very spicy topic, which is how the bookie's profile accounts and how you can stand to the radar. So just in more detail, just what you can expect in this five, six, seven minute video. I'm going to go through some key stats about the bookies with respect to profiling accounts. I'm going to go through the maths of what the bookies are essentially looking for. Uh, I want to talk about how the buckets are in terms of profiling and how you can uh, what happens if you're in the undesirable buckets we go through the key things that they look for uh, when profiling customers and how you can basically get profiled into the right bucket so you can maximize the lifetime value of your accounts which is essentially what it's all about there's also going to be a competition we had this last week as well in a video and it was very popular so the best question in the comment section in this youtube video we'll win $100, we'll draw that next week. And the whole idea there is to get a lot of questions going. Many people who, who watch the video are kind of thinking similar things. So it gets a bit of a conversation going. We respond to every comment. And so the, the best question will get uh, 100 bucks next week. For those not familiar, my background's in quant finance. I've been a professional derivatives trader for, for many years. I did a, a decent stint at Beth365 as a bookie, uh, head of in-play golf, essentially in, for the Asian time zone and, and, and as a generalist. And I've been betting for, for many years successfully as well. So the key facts about bookies. So firstly, winners versus losers. 99.5% of punters lose in the long run. It's pretty much standard across the board, across the globe, that those stats are, are, are very stable. Uh, it's in. It's actually very similar in, in betting as it in as it is in, in CFD trading as well, whether it's in FX or, or other products. So it's it's literally one in 200 who are profitable long-term. In Australia, the lifetime value of a customer who, who opens up an account with a betting company is 1200 bucks. So what that means is that when a, a new customer opens up an account, the bookies by default have a starting point of, okay, that we're probably gonna make $1,200 out of this customer. The key risks that the bookies face. So there are a few things that you know. Being a bookmaker, whilst the the zero point five percent you know winning, uh, it looks like a pretty nice nice you know percentages in your favour. They do have some some risks and some issues that they face. There's a lot of banking fraud, unfortunately, in the in the industry. People will. Uh, basically deposit money and and then they just tell the bookies that they that's not them and you know that gets charged back and whatever so there are issues there there, there are match fixing issues in the game in the in in the betting industry as well it's always a bit of a tail risk for for the bookies um there another risk is that sharp accounts so by sharp i mean those who are basically picking off the punt the, the bookies on on mispricings and who are basically able to price more uh, more accurately than the bookies. So the risk there is for the bookies if if there are people who are able to, one, find mispriced account, uh, uh, betting markets, and secondly, stay under the radar. Because if they if they don't stay under the radar, the bookies can really ban accounts. Uh, they can do all sorts of other things. The final thing, which is very relevant to the Edge Alerter members and, and the Edge Alerter system is uh, promo abusers who stay under the radar. So those who are milking promos for, for months and years, but the bookies look at them and go, ah, oh, this this guy or this girl or other, they, they, don't, they, don't, they look like they're going to be a long-term loser. However, they're, they're able to follow a system, stay under the radar and milk the promos. And this is really, this last point is what we're all about actually. So what are they looking for? Um, well, essentially, I mean, you could even say that this is just a general principle of business. Uh, it's all about present value of expected future cash flows. And so this is how the bookies look at every customer that opens up an account. They're going, okay, how much do we expect to make from this person? Directly, as in that person losing money or winning money. Uh, and through referral, so through those network effects, maybe they're referring good customers, maybe they're like as in losing customers. Uh, or maybe they're referring bad customers who, who are gonna take money from the bookies. And a key thing here to know then is when you open up an account, the bookies are like, okay, Joe Blow opens up an account. Who, where do we think, uh, what sort of profile do we have on these, this, this Joe Blow here? So essentially you could drill it down into four buckets. And the first bucket is someone who, 
who, who very clearly looks like a mud punter. And the bookies are like, yep, they, they don't look intelligent at all. We expect to make truckloads from this customer. So just let them bet whatever they like, including all promos, no issues, all good. Have a crack, just you don't even have to, 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 to look at them. Bucket two is moving down the, the sort of the continuum down here. So bucket two is like, okay, they're showing some indications of maybe being a little bit sharp here and there, but they're mostly a mug. Just maybe just check their account every month or so. Bucket three, this is where it starts getting a bit concerning. The bookies are a little bit worried. They're like, ooh, like they're, they're showing some continuous sharp tendencies. We don't really like that. Uh, and, you know, let's promo ban these guys, this, this account immediately. And, and let's take it a step further. Whenever they propose to place a bet, let's just send that off to a manual referral. And what that means is the bookies have, the, the, the bet's not placed until someone has manually at that betting agency had a look, look at that bet and just confirm that it's good to go. And if it's not, they can just knock it back and go, sorry, mate, um, we don't want to take your bet. So now it starts getting a bit worrying for the punter. Bucket four is we don't want this account at all. We have to abide by the law, so we're going to let them bet on the minimum bet laws. No bet, no promos for you. And in fact, you know what? We hate your account so much that we're going to... Um, restrict you to 1% of the betting limits on just everything else. So instead of being able to bet to win 500 or 5,000, they can bet to win like five bucks or 50 bucks, depending on, on the markets. And so what happens if you're getting that undesirable profiling bucket? So like buckets three and four, especially four, as I mentioned, promo band, they can hang your bets. So when you propose to place a bet, not only does it go to a manual referral, but they can just it can just sit there spinning. Maybe it's an in-play bet. They can let you know let the game play out a little bit, and um, and see if the bet moves against the punter. At which point they let you on. If it moves in favour of the punter, they they knock you back. Uh, they can move the prices. You try and bet on three bucks. They let it hang there, and then they go, "No, mate, it's two seventy now." And you're like, "Yeah, I'll still take two seventy. No, it's two forty now." And it's just a race to the bottom. They can reject you. Minimum bet laws on racing do solve this a little bit, but there's no true regulator over that either. So the boogies are getting um, away with murder on that as well. The final thing there is very interesting, actually. So some of the smaller and medium, the sort of T2, T3 boogies, a lot of them do do hedge uh, flows. So when they get sharp bets, they can actually um, front run you, which means they'll over hedge your bet or even hedge your bet, but not let you on. So it's all, it's all very spicy stuff, to be honest. One other point here is some of you might have been, like might be familiar with, with CFD trading, so FX, uh, other traditional markets opportunities. In fact, there are CFDs on crypto now as well. Exactly the same thing. They're just trying to work out if you're looking, if you have any sharp tendencies. If you, if you fall into that mug category, sort of categories one and two, then they won't even hedge your your trades, which are bets, you, you know, you could argue. Um, if you start looking half sharp, then they'll hedge and potentially even over hedge. So it's the same deal. So moving on. Okay, so let's go back here. So... How do they estimate your lifetime value? Really, there are two parts to it, two key things. So one is based on betting patterns, especially early on when you've opened up an account, they're really looking at you. They're like, okay, Joe Blow's opened up an account. Let's keep a close eye on this, this guy and work out what he's all about. The second thing is any links to existing customers because if, you, if they can link you to an existing customer, they can apply basically apply the profile of those, those customers that you link to to you as a bit of a default to go, hang on a minute, okay, maybe they're likely to be the same. So first thing, betting patterns, so red flags. So if you're always taking top price, they don't like it. It's That's just a fact, you're basically picking them off. You might be picking them off on movers. You might have some odds comparison software through um, whoever, whatever provider. But if you're always taking top price, it's just not a good look, they don't like that. If you've got a high promo to non-promo turnover ratio, that's an obvious one. So if all you do is bet on promos as an extreme, then 
you can see why they wouldn't like that. Um, if you're arbitraging, so if you're always just betting something where Betfair is shorter, it's it's not a good look. They don't look at you and go, this guy is um, likely to lose in the long run. In fact, the opposite. If you're betting on really low level sport or racing, you know, if you're betting on like third division Russian volleyball um, on a Tuesday morning, it just looks a bit weird as opposed to betting on NBA, for example, like five minutes before the game starts. Um, betting early in racing as well. If you're betting like on a Tuesday uh, for a Saturday race, it's kind of like, mm, I wonder if they know something. Whereas if you're betting in that last minute or two minutes, then that's when 80% of the bets are and you, you just sort of, and and, the, and importantly, the bookies are the most confident in the price. So green flags with respect to betting patterns. If you're betting into mid-market odds, so if, the, if you bring up some odds comparison software, and for example, a golfer is between $8 and $12 across the board with a lot of bookies, and a punter has a bet at 10 bucks, then they'll look at that and go, well, we're 10 bucks. You know, some guys are, some other bookies are eight bucks, three, six, five might be 12. They're 10, they tend to be the highest. Um, ah, that looks like a, a reasonable bet, no issue. Betting into top tier sports, as, as I mentioned, these are kind of the inverse of, of one another really, but um, if you're betting into top tier sports and codes, the bookies are, are basically just banking five, six, seven percent in their, in their sort of discounted cash flow model going forward. If you're betting 50, over 50% on non-promos, it's also um, a good thing. It, it's like you're, you're betting on um, non-promos, so therefore you're going to dump plenty over there and good luck to you. You can have a play around in the promo basket there and they know full well that they can cut you at any time. So if it's over 50% on non-promo, they're usually quite happy. And if you're betting late in racing, that usually makes them confident that you're going to lose long term. So the second thing is links to existing customers. So when you open up an account, they, they're they trying to, again, they're, as I mentioned in point number one, they're, they're, they look at your initial betting patterns especially. But the other thing is they can quickly go, okay, what's their address? What's their IP address? What are their bank details? Where exactly are they betting? Um, and what are their betting patterns? And they're trying, they can run some models, work out if, if any of those these key five items here match up with any of their existing customers. And if they do, they can drill down. And long story short, if you're linked to anyone who has previously been thrown into that bucket three or bucket four, which is sharp and the, the boogies don't like, then you by default have that as a starting position and you, you're pretty likely to get promo banned straight away. So then the question is, so how do you get into bucket one, which is that mug bucket of yeah let them on we don't you know have full access to promos don't have to worry about this customer so point number one maintain 50 50 in terms of promo versus non-promo ideally more early on because that's when they're really keeping a close eye on you in that first month first 30 30 bets percentage of promos taken so if for example sports bets a good example they might do 28 racing promos on a saturday they might do like 12 on a, on a wednesday so that's 40 so let's just say they've got 40 racing promotions and they might do 20 sport promotions. So they've got 60 in a week. If you're taking 55 out of the 60, it's not a good look. So take less than 50% of whatever any bookie offers you. And it's pretty easy to do these days and make truckloads of money because there are so many bookies offering promo. So just don't be too greedy with any one bookie at one time. The third point there is harmless looking betting flows. So mid-market and high-level sport, that's where the bookies are basically just uh, in their minds, they're just going, if you're betting in, into an NBA line at $1.91, uh, they're just like, we just printed 5%. Thanks for that. So it's a very easy way to way to, um, to look harmless. Cool. So that's basic, That's the video um, for today. If, um, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the YouTube uh, comments below. As I mentioned at the start, the best question will win 100 bucks cash. We'll announce that in one week. That was very popular last week. Whole idea there again is to just get some, get a bit of a conversation going down there. A lot of people thinking the same things. Uh, we'll answer every single question uh, as long as it's not crazy off topic. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like. 
If you want to get notified when there are new videos, uh, click subscribe. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can email us or you can even message me directly on Telegram Messenger on that handle. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.